I am Double Driven, and welcome to Team Leviathan Gaming's Starter Deck Budget Guide for Scoia'tael. Before we jump into the video, the crafting guide and starter deck upgrades were written and created by fellow Team Leviathan Gaming members Nim Rafael, Hippopotamus, and Wasubi. All information in greater detail can be found at teamleviathangaming.com slash crafting. If you're watching this video, you're probably new to Gwent. Welcome. Gwent is an amazing game and CDPR is the most generous company when it comes to collectible card games. If you played Gwent during its beta phase, welcome back. I've listed a number of resources below including the TLG Discord where teammates and community members will gladly help you. So this is the budgeted Scoia'tael list. We chose Bruver Hoog as you, their leader. He's pretty much the best leader you can get with Scoia'tael. Ethne can be argued as one that's better, but for starter purposes and the deck that we've crafted, um, you're going to need 920 scraps for this, and we recommend that you unlock Bruver through the reward book, which is at the beginning of your Brent Gwent client. It takes 10 reward points to unlock Bruver. His leader ability is move an enemy and damage it by two, or move an ally to another row and boost it by two. There's a lot of cards in here that enable the boost section, and there's also cards that help with the damage section as well. So let's get into the cards and see what we got. So once again, our splashable card, Aukvist, we're putting this in every one of our budgeted lists. It's just a really great card. It's a nice finisher. You play this your second to last card. If your opponent doesn't answer for it, especially if it's a long round, he's going to hit for anywhere from 10 to 15 points. Really great card. Um, can't You can't outvalue this card if you don't have the answer for it. It's just really good, especially in the lower ranks. And then again, we're adding Cleaver. Once again, this card is incredible. He can damage an enemy for every card you have in hand. As we mentioned before, the if you go second, your opponent going first, and they play Tactical Advantage, that card's going to get bumped up to nine. You play Cleaver, you still have nine cards in hand. This card is going to be able to remove that engine, and they have nothing on their board. Really great card. He always has an answer. If you have seven cards in hand, he does six damage. If he, you have, you know, the longer he stays in your hand, the less value he gets. But sometimes you can time an engine too to where you can know that, okay, it's going to get bumped up to seven. I can use this with eight cards in hand and kill that, uh, that engine. Really, really great versatile card. We also got Gregor de Gorgon in here as well. He's a melee unit. You have to play him on melee, and he requires to damage an enemy unit by one. If you death blow, which means if you kill a one strength unit, he's going to bump himself up by five and gain shield. So with Bruver's ability and all the other damage, you should be able to gain this, get a unit that's one strength and activate his death blow ability. And then once again, remember that shield, nothing can hit that unit. You have to hit the unit once to remove the shield, then you can start taking damage off the strength. So this card's in the starter deck to begin with, but I just wanted to cover it for a second. Pavko Gale, his orders damage a unit by one. He has a cooldown on one, so he plays for five strength and he's an engine. Um, if you didn't know though, Pavko Gale, the person depicted in the actual card art, is the community manager for Gwent, Pavel Berja. Uh, if you don't follow him on Twitter or if you watch the dev streams, he's always on there. He's just He's just an amazing guy. He loves Scoia'tael. Uh, so you're you're definitely making him happy by wanting to play Scoia'tael. But uh, he's just a really cool dude. Gwent's super lucky to have him as a community manager. Um, he's a really good card too, especially in a starter deck. So I just wanted to give him a quick mention. Um, Pavko's amazing. Feed version. So the next card we added, Ida Amin. Uh, this card is auto include. This card is absolutely incredible. No matter what, she's always going to do what she needs to. She can either go on melee and destroy an opponent's artifact. So if they do have something like a Thunderbolt potion and don't play it, she complete, completely removes it. Worst case scenario though, she plays on ranged and bumps a unit up by three, which you can bump up your uh, Mahakam defenders and that can start a new engine. Or it can save one of your smugglers or whatever, but she is such a versatile card 
uh, can't recommend crafting this enough. If you plan on maining Scoia'tael, this is definitely the first card you should craft for Scoia'tael. Next couple cards we added, Thunderbolt Potion. It's just a nice way to bump up one of your engines, just like Ida. If you play the Thunderbolt Potion and you got a defender on the board, it can end up growing more. Or if your opponent doesn't completely kill it, you can bump it back up and start that engine back up again. Really versatile card. And you don't have to always use the boosts, both of them, right off the bat. You could save them. That way if your opponent can't kill it again, you bump it back up again. Um, so if, if you could stay up on points and just use one of the charges, I highly recommend doing that. Lacerate, another great card. You can end up getting a really high swing with a Lacerate, especially in the long round and your leader ability. You can move, use Bruver to move a couple units, or you have um, Vryhead Dragoons in here as well that can move cards. And you can end up setting up a decent Lacerate where you know you might get like 8, 10, 12 points. That's a pretty big swing, and it, it can sometimes cause your opponent, you might end up killing some of their engines in the process with that Lacerate and your leader ability movement. The other card we added, uh, two Hawker Smugglers. These cards are, once you get accustomed to watching Gwent videos and everything, you're going to hear the term carryover. You play this card on melee, and at the end of your turn, it boosts a random unit in your hand by one. That's carryover points. If you don't play that unit that got buffed, you're bringing those extra points into the next round, which is really, really good. Especially in a round where you feel like you're not going to win it, and you can possibly better your hand by playing these cards. They can also be buffing up your Sheldon Skaggs. They can also be bumping up your Mahakam Defenders that need a buff to start ramping up their engines, and then you don't have to waste a, un a buff from Bruver to get that engine up and rolling. These cards are really, really good. They're prone to movement. If your opponent moves this card off of melee, it stops doing that. But you can also move it back up with Bruver. It's just, they're just really great cards and they demand an answer. Your opponent is going to see this card and know what you're doing. And they're going to either A, move it, or B, remove it. Because it's, it's very dangerous. Carryover in Gwent is a huge, huge deal because you got so much points that you're not spending until your last round. And if they're going on cards like Sheldon, they're actually playing for two points because you buff Sheldon up by one, that's another damage that Sheldon's doing as well. So these cards are really, really good and they're gonna help you out, especially with the carryover plays. So the last cards we added, you're gonna hear this term a lot as well, thinning. Thinning meaning you're getting through your deck quicker to get to your better cards. Cards that are doing this in this list alone are the Mahakam Volunteers, which just require a dwarf on the board. So you're getting an extra card out of your deck. And then the Broccolon Sentinels, damage an enemy unit by two, death blow, you summon the other one out of your deck. Thinning your deck, making your draws in your next round better. So you can use, it's even recommended to even use one of Bruver's abilities to possibly get these out. Just so that if your hand has a bunch of bronze cards, you start getting these bronzes out of your deck, you're going to start drawing your golds and it's going to increase your chances of winning. Really great card, especially in, as I mentioned, with the thinning. But that's the budgeted list for Scoia'tael. Check out Team Leviathan Gaming for updated meta snapshots and deck guides. Check this channel every day for new videos and Mondays for Ladder Leverage where I play with one of the TLG pros. Good luck guys and thanks for watching.